Welcome to Dateline Polk with news about your local county government. I'm your host, Taylor Carson. Today, you'll learn about county commissioners' actions from the January 22nd meeting. Commissioners approved a settlement of $1.5 million with Republic Services for overpayment of solid waste hauling services. The board approved a contract of approximately $1.2 million with Sin State Contractors, Inc. of Winter Haven for improvements to the Hodge Street Water Production Facility, which serves the western portion of Polk County. Board members then approved an amendment to the 2012-2013 Consolidated Action Plan. The amendment reassigns approximately $1.2 million to infrastructure projects within the Inwood community and the City of Eagle Lake. Greg Alpers with Housing and Neighborhood Development has the details. Uh, this morning we went before the board for a CDBG substantial amendment to uh, the yearly action plan. This yearly action plan we needed to uh, reassign money to uh, four different projects, three of them being in the area of Inwood, water and drainage projects, and the fourth being a project in the city of uh, Eagle Lake, which is also a water project. So we're real, real happy that, uh, to be able to do all these things for the community. In regular board action, commissioners approved the minutes from their regular board meeting and closed meeting held on January 8th. They also approved the consent agenda as well as disbursements from the county comptroller. Board members reappointed Beth Evans to the Housing Finance Authority for a four-year term that expires in January 2017. They also appointed Kevin Hoover to the Northridge Community Redevelopment Agency Advisory Committee for a three-year term that expires in January 2016. During the public hearing, commissioners amended, amended the 4th Cent Tourist Development Tax Ordinance. The amendment continues the collection of a portion of the tax that was set to expire this month. Board members heard an appeal to a road frontage waiver approved by the Development Review Committee for a lot in the Cody Land Subdivision in Babson Park. After hearing the appeal and reviewing an administrative interpretation of the issue, the board upheld the waiver, deeming it appropriate. The board then approved an amendment to the Oakmont Development Agreement. The amendment includes modification to payment and title details. It also further defines responsibilities of the parties involved in the agreement. And lastly, commissioners approved an applicant-initiated amendment to the Land Development Code to allow drive-through retail in the defined town center of Highland City. R.J. Walters, communications specialist of the Transportation Planning Organization, joins us now with an update on transportation projects in Polk County. Today's seemingly uber-smart technology is often recalculating and suggesting haphazard U-turns as you try to find your way down new streets or unfamiliar trails. It can be fascinating and it can be frustrating. The same can often be said for public involvement opportunities in local government, and that's why the Polk Transportation Planning Organization is ecstatic about offering you the opportunity to help point the collective compass in regards to county road, trail, and public transit projects. Recruitment is underway for the TPO's advisor network a group of concerned citizens who will share their transportation experiences and ideas with county planners while learning more about the process of making our county more accessible and safe. The advisor network will combine survey participation with social media conversations, webcast, and in-person meetings to find out what Polk residents' changing transportation needs are and where people believe the most prudent places are to spend local, state, and federal funds. You don't have to have any experience with the municipal government to become a transportation advisor with the network, and there are no strict mandates on your time. You can participate as much or as little as you would like. All who want to join the advisor network will be sent a welcome package that includes a special edition advisor USB card filled with pertinent transportation documents, videos, an introduction to the TPO's complete vision for the group, and more. Joining forces via this new venture is as easy as calling me at the TPO office at 863-534-6709 or going online to polk-county.net backslash the advisor network where you can register to be an advisor. While you're at it, join the social that is moving people by liking the Polk TPO on Facebook and following us on Twitter at Polk TPO. Through social media you can stay up to date on developing projects 
but for now, we'll shift our focus to ongoing road projects you're likely to encounter in your travels through Polk County. Those who frequently travel to and through Bartow will get a bit of respite on the SR60 US 98 intersection project as there are no construction activities that are expected to cause daytime road closures this week. However, motorists traveling both directions through that intersection on SR60 may experience slight delays after 9.30 p.m. on Thursday as crews shift the two left turn lanes leading from eastbound SR60 to northbound US 98 further to the north. In addition, traffic on SR60 between US 98 and east of Wilson Avenue will be restricted to one lane in each direction beginning at 9.30 p.m. Friday through 5.30 a.m. Monday, January 28th, as crews pour concrete. A concrete pour in the center of the SR60 Wilson Avenue intersection that was originally scheduled for earlier this month has been postponed until mid-February. Stay tuned to possible detours in the month of February by visiting idriveus98.com. Some North Lakeland travelers will have to locate a detour more quickly as Duff Road, west of the intersection at Kathleen Road, is currently closed to through traffic until at least January 31st. During closure, traffic will be detoured north along Kathleen Road, then west on Mather Avenue to Catherine Road, which returns south to Duff Road. Closure is required to reconstruct the section of Duff Road as part of the Kathleen Road widening project that is scheduled for completion by mid-September 2013. A bevy of short-term daytime lane closures may cause travelers of SR33 some delay this week. On SR33 in front of the Polk County Health Department in Bartow, road work will cause intermittent lane closures from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Just south of Bridgewater Center Lane on SR33, crews are adding a right turn lane among other activities, which will cause temporary lane closures from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And just north of Glenwood Drive on SR33, there will likely be delays throughout the week from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. US 17 also has a number of small to medium scale projects ongoing that will cause daytime lane closures throughout the week. As part of the construction of the new roadway, the Bartow Northern Connector, from US 98 to US 17, there will be some lane closures on 17 between Crossover Road and SR 60 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. The affected lanes include the inside northbound lane and the inside and outside southbound lanes. The connector is expected to be complete by this spring. Lane closures are also possible along US 17 this week from CR 640 Homeland to 9th Street Northeast in Fort Meade. Other roads expected to have daytime delays include SR 17 and Frostproof between F Street and I Street from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. SR 659 on Cumbie Road south of Bob Rawls Road from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Airport Road at Gay Street in Lakeland from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Third shift workers and night owls will experience the brunt of lane closures as this week turns into the next. The following roads will have single lane closures from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. every evening from Sunday, January 27th to Wednesday, January 30th as mulching operations are completed. The I-4 highway entrance and exit ramps at Socrum Loop Road to SR-33, which is exit 33. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard from Memorial Boulevard to the in-town bypass. North Florida Avenue from Memorial Boulevard to Pine Street. South Florida Avenue from Doris to Imperial Boulevard. And other road projects that are expected to cause delays and lane closures once the sun has gone down include the following. US-92 at Memorial and Old Dixie Highway. US-27 at Home Run Boulevard. US 17 from north of Avenue K Northwest and also at Avenue I Northwest, SR 37 north of Carter Road and also at McDonald Street, and SR 33 south of East Robinson Street. With heavy machinery, flagmen and women, and construction workers busy at work throughout the county, motorists are advised to drive with caution, follow signs, and be alert to workers and equipment. That's all we've got for today's road update, but look for information on the next TPO board meeting and new construction details in two weeks. With the updates on the plan that moves Polk, I'm R.J. Walters. To keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We also encourage you to join us at the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, February 5th. Thank you for watching this edition of Dateline Polk.